Ding dong, hello, we are in your house location, hell in a cell. As the past two weekends, WWE has had an NXT takeover and a hell in a cell pay-per-view, which took place last night, and now we're on the road to the Great American Bash and Money in the Bank. As those events will take place on Tuesday, July the 6th and Sunday, July the 18th, respectively. As the world of professional wrestling is about to be back out on the road with live fans in the stands here in the next few weeks. I'll be attending a few events myself, so keep an eye out for videos. Hopefully you'll tune in for more live reaction streams right here on the YouTube channel. As well, as always, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. As I'm your host, Encyclopedia Sports, Cool Luke 96 Always greatly appreciated. Hit that thumbs up button. Share hashtag AEW, hashtag WWE, hashtag NFC TakeOver, hashtag Hell in a Cell as well as those are the most two recent events that we're going to be discussing in this audio only recording be sure if you have a chat question or comment as well to drop it down below and uh, hit that red subscribe button little notification bell next to it as well if you haven't done so already easiest way to stay up to date is on social media once more links in the description below so without further ado WWE NXT TakeOver In Your House and WWE Hell in a Cell from the past two Sundays, June 13th and 20th, respectively. So, uh, past few weeks, over the next month, uh, everything's going to be in the world of pro wrestling. This is back to normal, as uh, so we think at least, um, as we once knew it to be. As uh, pre COVID, of course, March of uh, 2020, hopefully everyone's doing well. And staying safe, but um, second in your house for NXT the past two years. It's become a June event. However, Hell in a Cell was bumped up from October to June as well this year. Um, as uh, Hell in a Cell last night is going to go down as the final Thunderdome pay per view for the WWE. And hopefully, knock on wood, there's not another pandemic in the next uh, few years or decades. Maybe a hundred years from now, as was a hundred years ago, uh, to get to this point once more, um, and who knows how much the world will change from now until then. Anyways, but um, it's going to be back to normal. Have live fans in seats. Um, no more virtual Thunderdome. Uh, AEWs. I mean, they've had fans for quite a while now, but uh, for the WWE, as um, I mean. Raw as of late sucked, I've thought, past two months after WrestleMania. Um, I mean, it is what it is. They're still going to do what they want anyway. Uh, SmackDown's been the show. Dynamite's been on Friday night's past few weeks. Uh, they'll be on a Saturday and then um, back to their Wednesday schedule here, about a week and a half, two weeks or so now. Um, and then they'll be out on the road first, followed by the WWE uh, about two weeks after that. So... The first, uh, yeah, the first Wednesday in July, and then the 16th of July is when the WWE gets back out. So after the 4th, we got another few weeks until everything gets back to normal for, for wrestling. But today, we're going to talk, uh, discuss a little bit w what's happened as of late. Uh, yes, of course, there was no live reaction stream on the channel. Uh, ended up uh, doing what I'm doing now, audio only recap if you will past two events but uh, don't get me wrong July the 6th and 7th uh, we're gonna hit the ground running once more um, and it'll be my first live stream in almost two months at that point in time come back to WrestleMania backlash um, but um, of course still videos rolling out here on the channel so uh, always thankful for the support once more and be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already but um great american bash will be july the 6th and then aw dynamite uh, will have a road rager event uh first of its kind the next night on july the 7th um and then aw gonna roll out fighter fest as a two night two week event on the 14th and 21st uh friday night smackdown that friday as well the 16th that's Money in the Bank weekend as well as uh, WWE will be in the Lone Star State of Texas 
as SmackDown will be in Houston, Money in the Bank will be in the Big D in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, and then uh, Raw next night as well um, in Dallas. But um, then they'll, the WWE will do their 25-date tour that they've announced. They'll add more in, um, you know, when the time's right, of course, as they always do. But um, AW going to be in Florida and Texas uh, for their first few events and then uh, they'll have Fight for the Fallen as well, I might add, at the end of July on the 28th. As they'll hit Miami, Austin, Dallas, and Charlotte, North Carolina before uh, I'll get to see the WWE uh, here in my neck of the woods. Uh, along with AEW, uh, late July, early mid-August. Uh, so as mentioned, uh, keep an eye out for uh, more videos right here on the channel, whether it be a live reaction stream, audio only, recording as this is, uh, and once more, thank God, get back to normal once more, we'll have uh, videos from being live in living color uh, from live events that I'll attend. So, as mentioned, keep an eye out for uh, those videos uh, along with the live reaction streams right here on the YouTube channel. But yeah, without further ado, went about six and a half minutes too long discussing uh, a bunch of nonsense, but uh, well, uh, here we are. We're going to move on. Uh, yeah, in your house last Sunday, Hell in a Cell, technically. Now, last night, we'll have Raw tonight, NXT tomorrow, SmackDown Friday, and then AEW Saturday this week. As they'll get back to uh, an actual live show, they've been taped the past few weeks. So, Mega going to defend the world title against Jungle Boy after he won the uh, Casino Battle Royal at. Um, Double or nothing. That's, of course, the last video right here on the channel. And since then, the WWE's uh, released a few more superstars. They've brought back uh, a recent release as well. We'll get into that in a second. But uh, Aleister Black and Braun Strowman no longer with the company, unfortunately. We'll see what Tommy N does uh, along with Adam Sure, But um, Aleister, I think he'd be best off elsewhere. He, I think he'd be stupid to come back to the WWE. Uh, regardless if they want him to come back or not, you know, it's going to be his decision. I think he would thrive in AEW as potentially the new leader of the Dark Order if they play their cards right. Um, Braun, I mean, he could honestly go anywhere. Um, we'll see what happens, but yeah, in your house and hell in a cell. So Todd Pettengill hosted for the second consecutive year. Mikasa, Sukasa, uh, they had the uh, opening video package as we had a women's championship title defense. The million dollar championship is also back. Uh, we had a women's singles match with Mercedes Martinez and Zia Lee. Also a winner take all match that uh, featured Bronson Reed and MSK taking on Legato Del Fantasma. So a six man tag. Winner take all with the North American and NXT tag team titles on the line. And then, of course, the main event was, in fact, the NXT Championship Fatal Five Way match that Karen Cross defended against Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Johnny Gargano, and Pete Dunn himself. So, uh, to kick off the show, we actually had a In Your House musical performance. Uh, and then Pettengill came out, told everyone, Hey, I'm your host, Todd Pettengill. Um, we saw him a few more times throughout the night, but nothing major. I mean, just a few backstage segments with him uh, popping in and out of whether, you know, there were promos, um, interviews, that type of stuff. Um, it's not like he got involved in any of the matches and screwed anybody over by any means. But um, to kick off the night, they had the six-man tag with Reed and MSK who are your North American and Tag Team Champions right now, uh, as they defended, since it was a winner-take-all, a six-man tag against Legado Del Fantasma. And then, uh, very good match, I thought, especially to kick off the show. Uh, they, I mean, NXT's had fans uh, in Orlando at the PC, the Capitol Wrestling Center, as of late as well. So, I mean, it's not like they're all still, you know, virtual with the NXT Thunderdome, if you will. 
as Raw and SmackDown have been now since last August for SummerSlam. As SummerSlam's approaching, that'll be in Vegas on a Saturday night this year, August the 21st. And then TakeOver that weekend will be the next night. It'll be the Sunday night. So they're going to flip it this year uh, with SummerSlam. Vegas won the Saturday night, same night as Pacquiao fight. But they're saying it's going to be over before that starts, which it probably will be. But if you're going to both, you're probably not going to show up until, I don't know, a few rounds into the main event with uh, Pacquiao and whoever the hell he's fighting. Boxing's starting to come back. I mean, it's not what it once was by any means as anything is anymore. But, um, yeah, we'll see what you know happens for Raw and NXT and SmackDown moving forward to Money in the Bank, getting back to live fans, and then going from there for SummerSlam. Biggest part of the summer, it's WWE's second biggest show, of course, behind WrestleMania. They had about 25000 each night for Mania down in Florida uh, back in April. So, you know, fast forward four months. SummerSlam's probably going to be as big as it's ever been this year, I would think, with probably another 25000 40000 people. Uh, at Allegiant Stadium, home of the Raiders. I mean, they probably could sell more, but from what I've heard, they are having trouble selling a lot of tickets in all these uh, cities that they're hitting right off the bat. Whether you know those are Raws, Smackdowns, and live events are returning as well on the weekends, house shows that at one point in time, even pre-COVID, rumor was hey, they're going to be going away. And no, I don't think so. And they know that. They're bringing them back. So, as mentioned, I'll be attending a few, so keep an eye out. But, um, yeah, NXT's had fans, so it's not really anything new for them. But they had, uh, from what they said, the most they ever had an NXT taping for a takeover, which was bullshit. You know damn well there's been... uh, and I don't care if it's Full Sail University or the PC, Capital Wrestling Center. Still Orlando, still NXT. Um, I get different venues, but still. They fit the same amount of people in as they would for any other show when it's normal. So, yeah, that was complete BS, I thought. But, I mean, there's always something to bitch about, right? Regardless, this six-man tag kicked off the show. Crowd was in... Uh, to this for a little bit. I mean, throughout the night, they they seemed like they were there, but they weren't, if that makes any sense. I mean, I don't know. It just... The past two weeks, take over and hell in a cell because of the booking. You always got to circle back around to the booking. Um, the builds... I mean, TakeOver was a better show than Hell in a Cell last night, I thought. But Double or Nothing beat both. Um, I mean, I get Double or Nothing's AEW's along with All Out, you know, their WrestleMania and SummerSlams as well. But, um, you know, if if only the booking was ten times better, they don't have to worry about, you know, ratings and, like, it's, I don't know. It's just pathetic sometimes. And you look at Raw, it's just been, it's been terrible. Whereas Chuck would say terrible. It, it, it's been bad. It has. It, it's it's ridiculous. Um, it's like it's pro wrestling. I get, you know, the entertainment factor, but it's still pro wrestling. And they wonder why people don't watch because of half the garbage that they're putting on TV, expecting people to enjoy it. When, okay, they know people are going to watch regardless, so once again, they can do what they want and they're going to do what they want regardless of what we think and you know say or bitch about it all we want so it is what it is I'll digress I know I'm going on and on almost 15 minutes in and we're not even hardly you know started talking about takeover um hell in a cell yet but we'll try to keep the pace I suppose we'll see try to speed it up here a little bit but um I mean, pretty predictable, both shows as well, honestly. I mean, Hell in a Cell last night actually was pretty good. 
wasn't as good as uh, WrestleMania Backlash last month. Um, I mean, they had to, just had to, take off the Roman Reigns Rey Mysterio match and put it on SmackDown. Just had to. I don't know why. They still would have finished by 11 o'clock at the latest. I mean, something probably would have got bumped up, potentially scrapped. But then Hell in a Cell did start at 8 last night rather than the normal as it's been as of late, 7 p.m. Eastern time for the start of a pay-per-view. So WWE needs to make up their goddamn mind on what time pay-per-views are going to be starting moving forward because, I mean, the past few years, and when I say few years, you know, probably 2015, 2016, they were what they're doing now, 8 o'clock, move them to 7, some of them are still 8, but for the most part, from uh, then on out, up until just, you know, recently, they've all been 7 o'clock starts. And then, okay, past year and a half as well, pay-per-views have only been 2, 2 and a half, 3 hours the max, not your 3, 3 and a half, 4, 5 hour pay-per-views. Um, so, like Mania was 8 o'clock, but of course the rain delay, they didn't get started until 9 the first night, and then they were on schedule the second night, but um, WrestleMania Backlash was a 7 o'clock start. Takeover was an 8. Hell in a Cell last night was an 8. I would assume Money in the Bank's going to be an 8 o'clock start. SummerSlam is already scheduled, penciled in to be an 8 o'clock start, so I guess they're going back to 8 o'clock pay-per-views. Um, but they just had to put Roman and Ray on SmackDown inside the Hell in a Cell for the Universal Championship. I don't know why they couldn't have kept it on the pay-per-view, but they had to put it on free TV for everyone, which, I mean, everybody knew Reigns was going to win anyway, just as with Bronson Reed and uh, MSK taking on Legado Del Fontas. I mean, that match, not as predictable, but still pretty damn predictable. Um, like, everybody knew Karen Cross was going to retain. And okay, if he didn't, well, he's going to get called up. And at some point in time, he's going to be getting called up anyway, so he's going to be dropping the title, I would think, by the end of the summer. Not unless he pulls to Kevin Owens and, you know, he's up on the main roster as an ex-champion. Um, WWE's going to have another draft at the end of August, early September. Uh, it'll be... August the 30th and September the 3rd, so on Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown, respectively. Uh, AEW is also going to roll out a second show as well, Rampage, beginning August the 13th. So we'll see how that goes. But, um, yeah, both these shows are pretty damn predictable. And it's the booking, the build, just, I don't know, is what it is once more, but... Um, they can do better, we know it, they know it, is what it is, so, um, yeah, they just had to put that on TV, they, I get, are trying to keep it as fresh as they possibly can, and try not to copy, I mean, but anymore, it's a copycat league for anything and everything, everybody's gonna copy each other at some point in time. It just seems to me all they care about is the ratings. Well, you wouldn't have to worry about the ratings if the booking was ten times better than what it is and you're not doing as much stupid shit as you are. End of story. You know, I'll leave it at that. I mean, I, I know I've discussed, I don't know how much of all this nonsense that whether, you know, I'm frustrated about it. I mean, it is frustrating because, as I just mentioned, they know, we know, they can do ten times better, but we're still getting the same damn thing week after week after week. Especially on Raw. SmackDown's pretty damn good. Um, NXT's been good as of late. The NXT after TakeOver last week, and we're going to get into a little bit of recap of that as well. Because at the end of TakeOver, which we'll get to in a second, sort of a cliffhanger into the last week's show now. NXT last Tuesday was arguably, in my opinion, better than the past two months of Monday Night Raw. And, you know, Raw as the number one show, I mean, SmackDown really is, but um, honestly, you think about it, what's that saying? Okay, so 
Yeah, Bronson Reed and MSK. I'll digress once more. Almost 20 minutes of wasted time, but Bronson Reed and MSK defeated Legado del Fantas when kickoff takeover. And then uh, Mercedes Martinez and Zaya Lee had a singles match. And it's not what happened during the match, but what happened after as Mi Ying attacked Mercedes Martinez. As it seems to me, they're going to be pushing Zaya Lee, but the women's division with. Uh, and this goes for Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. It's getting better, but it's still not what they know it can be, what we all know it could be as well, what it's been as of late. I mean, they need Becky Lynch back on Raw or SmackDown. Um, they need fans back, plain and simple. You know, it's, it's run its course. You know, we can't live like this. Everybody's got to get back to normal. And slowly but surely, in the world of pro wrestling, we can actually here shortly get back to these events so yeah once Zia Lee defeated Mercedes Martinez Mi Ying attacked Mercedes Martinez post-match so Zia Lee and then Mi Ying stand tall but then stand even taller post-match and as I mentioned it seems to me they're going to be pushing her in the women's division moving forward but Right after that, we had Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher backstage. They cut a promo on Grizzled Young Veterans. As, of course, they talked to us because it was a promo. But let me talk to you. Next, we're going to the moon as the Million Dollar Championship was, in fact, on the line. It was Cameron Grimes and Eli Drake, of course, now known as LA Knight in NXT. So, Trevor Lee... Eli Drake go back to TNA Impact. It's now Cameron Grimes and LA Knight for the million dollar title with Ted DiBiase in LA Knight's corner. Very, very good match. I thought it was the match of the night, honestly. Uh, a lot of ladder spots, as it was in fact a ladder match for the million dollar championship. The only way to win was to clumb the ladder of success. You did what to the ladder? I clumbed it. No. John Elder would say. You didn't clumb it, you climbed it. And that's what LA Knight did. Uh, match was, as mentioned, pretty damn good. Uh, felt like it went on forever. Um, in my opinion, it was the best match of the night. I mean, depending on who you ask, they might say something else, of course, but everybody has their own opinion. Um, I mean, the Fatal 5-Way main event was pretty damn good. I mean, all these matches, honestly, take over and then hell in a cell as well. Very, very good matches. You know, depending on who you ask, everybody's going to have a different opinion on what they thought, you know, was the best, the worst, what could have been better, what stole the show, all that wrapped up into one. So, yeah, million dollar title now belongs to L.A. Knight as he climbed that ladder. Um, ended up turning on D.B. Aussie on NXT then, just 48 hours later. Um, and now Cameron Grimes is in the Million Dollar Man's corner. So it seems to me this feud will be continuing moving forward with LA Knight as your new Million Dollar Champion defending potentially against Cameron Grimes once more uh, in the Million Dollar Championship's first title defense and God knows how long technically come July the 6th at Great American Bash. But we'll get into potential storylines, feuds, uh, here momentarily uh, that potentially very well could happen moving forward over the next few weeks and months to come in uh, WWE for Raw, NXT, and SmackDown once, in fact, we recap In Your House and Hell in a Cell. So stay tuned. After the Million Dollar Ladder match, we had a brawl actually backstage uh, and this was after there was a parking lot incident earlier in the day as well with four of the five members in the Fatal Five Way, minus Adam Cole. He was nowhere to be found until the main event rolled around. So earlier in the day, Gargano and O'Reilly had an incident in the famous NXT parking lot. However, after the latter match, that brawl backstage involved Karrion Cross and Pete Dunne in which William Regal had to get involved and ended up breaking it up before we had the co-main event of the evening with the NXT Women's Championship on the line 
as Raquel Gonzalez defended against Ember Moon. Raquel picked up the win, retained. All right, match. Wasn't anything spectacular. I mean, could have been a little bit better, but predictable. Um, until Dakota Kai turns on Raquel Gonzalez, and then Tegan Knox does, in fact, return from injury. This NXT Women's Championship pitcher, until they continue to push whoever they're going to push into that title scene, Frankie Monet, of course, from the known as Taya Taya Valkyrie, uh, very well could be taking over for Robert Stone at some point in time. Of course, WWE's Tony Khan. If you don't know who Robert Stone is, well, look him up. He is WWE's Tony Khan. Um, they have the women. Raw, NXT, and SmackDown, especially NXT for God's sakes. They have the women. They have the talent. But circle back around, B-O-O-K-I-N-G. There I spelled it out for you. The goddamn booking. If only they knew what they were going to do half the time, especially up on the main roster. NXT's, you know, basically by itself because at least Paul Vec on her Hearst Helmsley, Triple H, knows what sells and what's good. You know, he's not stuck in... 1960 for God's sakes and at that point Vince wasn't even running the WWF at that point in time as it was the WWF three W's and an F and then it turned to the WWF once he of course bought it from his dad and then the animals had to get involved so now as we know at the WWE then now forever together WWE so um, Vince is stuck in the past to me that's what it seems like he doesn't know he does but he doesn't know what the hell he's doing half the time but he's still going to do what he wants because he gets the final say especially in all these releases he could have saved half of them but no in quotes budget cuts I'll leave it at that next was the main event of the evening it was a fatal 5-way NXT championship match with Karrion Cross once again defending against Adam Cole Kyle Riley, Johnny Gargano, and Pete Dunne. However, right before that, we got Dexter Loomis playing with Karate Fighters backstage. And then our final Todd Pettengill cameo appearance of the evening before we found out Great American Bash is returning. Tuesday night, July the 6th, will be a one-night event only this year compared to the two-night event that it was last year. Cross ended up retaining, even though he really didn't do a whole lot in the match. As Cole, O'Reilly, Gargano, and Dunn carried the ship, but the champion captained the match and came out victorious. As Karen Cross is still your NXT champion moving forward, we'll see how much longer he holds the title for. As mentioned, there is the WWE draft coming up at the end of August, early September post SummerSlam so he'll have a Great American Bash TV event in a few weeks and then another takeover and then potentially his NXT career is done before he I would like to see him on Raw compared to SmackDown Raw is going to need him more than SmackDown does but if they put him on SmackDown okay so be it I'm sure we'll have a few other call ups as well just depends on who um, they did announce though as NXT has mentioned with TakeOver, sort of ended with a cliffhanger. They did announce, though, on regular NXT TV last week that at Great American Bash, uh, following, of course, both Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly losing, alone Gargano and Dunn in the Fatal 5-way NXT Championship main event match at TakeOver in Your House against Karrion Cross. they're going to continue the Adam Cole-Kyle O'Reilly story as they'll face off in singles competition at the Great American Bash event on Tuesday, July the 6th. So Great American Bash, once more, is July the 6th. However, as mentioned, NXT TakeOver in your house ended with a cliffhanger. Um, normally with what happened, never happens, as they didn't hit the closing credits with Cross standing in the ring, standing at the entrance, standing tall, victory, still your NXT champion. 
they cut backstage for an interview with William Regal about to walk out of the building as Regal then exited Capitol Wrestling Center, was being interviewed in that famous NXT parking lot, backstage, out back, and Regal's had it. He's getting up there in age, yes. I even said a few weeks ago, if this keeps up, he's going to have a heart attack. And of course, storyline-wise, it makes sense to get to this point, which they did. Regal saying NXT's been bedlam, not Oklahoma, Oklahoma State bedlam, but NXT's been bedlam as of late. With all the madness going on, there needs to be a change as William Regal sort of quits, resigns from his general manager's position in NXT, a title he's held for quite some time. As he just walked off, and that's when the closing credits hit. They faded to black. Rest in peace to WWE's Aleister Black, but Tommy End, hopefully, if he does come back, okay. I mean, he's got his 90-day no-compete clause, but um, they dropped the ball with him. They've dropped the ball with a lot of wrestlers as of late, but it all circles, my opinion at least, back to the booking. Um, but, yeah, hopefully if he does go to AEW, they push him to the moon, as Trevor Lee Cameron Grimes would say, and uh, would like to see, of course, that million dollar championship feud with both Grimes and the new champion in LA Knight, Eli Drake, continue as, I mean, Gargano is really in my opinion, the only one that right now could make sense and fit in to challenge Knight for that title um, as the way could use um, the million dollar title as of course with uh, Candace and Indy and then Austin Theory there as well um, we'll see what they do with the way I mean it seems to me they're sort of I don't know they're in the same spot not as high up but same spot as what the Undisputed Era was okay four guys versus two guys and two girls though so it's a very, very good faction. As much as I don't like Gargano, the way they're pretty damn good, they are. But back to Regal here, and then we're going to get into, you know, potential matches here, and then get into Hell in a Cell. And this video, I bet, as the past few videos for audio-only recordings, it's been about an hour or so, maybe a little bit more. I would expect the same as we just hit past the half-hour mark. So, you know, if you want to fast-forward, Go ahead, I'm not going to mind, but just be sure to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button if you haven't done so already. But yeah, Regal sort of just quit NXT. Um, and thought to myself at that point in time, okay, I'm sure if Regal is technically, in quotes, resigning, he's done from being the general manager of WWE NXT, that's his on screen role. He's still going to be involved backstage one way or another. And then, okay, you get to thinking on who very well could replace William Regal as NXT GM. Well, just knowing how WWE operates, got to go back in the history books. Some old former general managers that the WWE's had in the past. Um, Eric Bischoff comes to mind. He's been in and out of both AEW and the WWE as of late, of course, in the Hall of Fame. But um, you think about the Hulkster, Hulk Hogan, Kurt Angle, who won a gold medal with a broken frickin' neck. Olympics coming up next month. Mankind, Dude Love, Cactus Jack, Mick Foley. Maybe even Stone Cold or CM Punk. Which, those last two, very doubtful. But then, okay, you think, too, Triple H and Shawn Michaels really run NXT. Maybe them. Haven't seen Daniel Bryan in almost two months. Potentially him. But then Samoa Joe was cut, not in this last round of cuts, but the ones right after WrestleMania. And there are some rumors floating around right before TakeOver. And then during TakeOver, that, okay, Samojo could be coming back to the WWE 
just in NXT. In my opinion, Joe's not leaving NXT as long as Vince is in charge. Uh, you'll only see Samoa Joe on NXT moving forward as long as Vince is around. Samoa Joe will not be up on Raw or SmackDown ever again. Not unless Vince is gone. Okay? Because, hey, speak about dropping the ball. Yeah, okay, Samoa Joe was sort of an enforcer once he first got called up. Go back to WrestleMania 33, injured Seth Rollins. Um, he was sort of an authority figure alongside Triple H. Um, really, the biggest accomplishment he had up on the main roster was winning the U.S. title, which I saw in person, actually. Video from that right here on the channel. Uh, really couldn't stay healthy. Sort of didn't know what to do with him either. Circle back around the booking once more. I mean, he faced Brock at, what, Great Balls of Fire for the title. Of course, lost. But, um, once more, couldn't stay healthy, so they had him on commentary. And then he gets cut. And if they clear him, if he, at this point in time, comes back, hopefully he's going to be wrestling in NXT. Um, but, of course, nothing happened at the end of NXT. Take over in your house. But, come last Tuesday night now, kick off the show, William Riggle was going to address the NXT universe. Um, and Samoa Joe ended up coming out, confronted Karen Cross, who is your NXT champion. However, Samoa Joe is still not cleared to wrestle. So, speak of Enforcer, not Double A Arn Anderson by any means, but Samoa Joe is the new Enforcer to William Regal, who is still your NXT general manager. He did not quit. He did not resign. Regal's still in charge. Uh, Samoa Joe's just the enforcer now in NXT. He cannot touch anybody unless tempted to. So, he did get involved with the opening segment with face to face with Karrion Cross. He ended up putting his hands on uh, Adam Cole as he broke up a Cole O'Reilly fight backstage. Um, later on in the night as well, Samoa Joe with William Regal by his side. I mean, you can tell who's in charge, but, um, it seems to me they're teasing Samoa Joe Pete Dunne potentially if Joe does get cleared at some point in time. Hopefully he does by the end of the year. Um, if he doesn't, okay, so be it. But it's good to see Joe back on WWE TV. If he would run to AEW or back to Impact, I mean, I get TNA was teasing for some anniversary next month, but, you know, Joe would have thrived in both those spots as well, but it's good to see him back in NXT because Samoa Joe was always TNA. He was always TNA, and then he did the indies. He was in Ring of Honor there for quite a while before he joined NXT back in, was it, 2015, and then him and Finn Balor, uh, along with... Um, you know, the Kevin Owens and the Sami Zayn's and then the Shinsuke Nakamura feud with uh, Samoa Joe and Finn Balor as well. Those stick out. That's high NXT. That's when NXT was at its point. 2015, 2016, 2017, okay. Cole and company come in and NXT is still NXT. It's not as good as what it once was. I know I've said it a few times for a few different things already, but it's good to see Samoa Joe back in NXT. So, yeah, Samoa Joe's the enforcer to William Regal. Uh, we'll see how it plays out moving forward, but um, Samoa Joe back in the yellow brand of the WWE as a enforcer. Uh, and then also in NXT... And really, you think about the potential GMs that I listed, you knew really none of them were probably going to happen. I mean, maybe they'd have bad news Wade Barrett announce the vacant computer general manager ringside just for the hell of it, just to do something different, just for a little bit, until they figured out, of course, who or what they are going to do. 
But um, Samoa Joe's back. He's the enforcer. However, also in NXT, they tease the Diamond Mine once more, as that'll debut now next week. It seems to me it's going to be a, I don't know, some sort of MMA dojo in the NXT world. We'll see. Come technically now tomorrow night, as I'm recording this the day after Hell in a Cell, a week after, eight days after take over in your house six days after the last NXT so yeah a lot of uh, moving parts a lot going on here just the past two weeks with these two events with the main roster and then not even the minor leagues of the WWE anymore NXT is better than Raw Smackdown is a top show but Raw still has the potential to be the best because it, it was for how long but L.A. Knight also turned on Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man himself, as mentioned a minute ago as well. And then they also announced Cole and O'Reilly for Great American Bash in a few weeks. Um, However, upcoming feuds, storylines, what matches are going to take place next. I mean, they teased Samoa Joe, Pete Dunne, I thought, to an extent. They teased Samoa Joe and Karen Cross as well. Finn Balor still potentially going to be returning, whether it be to NXT or up on Raw or SmackDown again, we'll see. So maybe Cross and Finn once more. Bronson Reed is your NXT North American champion. Dexter Loomis seems to fit there. Um, They could go rematch for the Million Dollar title with LA Knight and Cameron Grimes. As mentioned, Gargano seems to be the only one, the only other wrestler, in my opinion, that could fit right now up against Knight for that title. So maybe LA Knight and Gargano. Kushida's just floating around once more with the Cruiserweight Championships. We'll see what they do with him along with the women's title and the tag team championships as well for both the men and the women. And then as thought, Cole and O'Reilly, they made it official then. That'll happen at Great American Bash. Next... We're going to hop on the highway to hell as we went straight to hell last night with WWE Hell in a Cell. As we had two women's championship matches plus uh, another women's singles match. This featured Alexa Bliss and Shayna Baszler. And then they also added in Cesaro and Seth Rollins along with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in singles competition. Both from Friday Night Smackdown. Just a few days prior they added those to the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. And then the main event was the WWE Championship Hell in a Cell match, which featured the almighty Bobby Lashley defending against the Chosen One, Scottish Psychopath, turned Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre. If McIntyre lost, he'd never be able to challenge Bobby Lashley to the WWE Championship ever again as long as the almighty one is the WWE Champ. So, storyline-wise... They could play it out for a while, but I think eventually, especially once fans get back, uh, McIntyre is going to get back on top, have another title reign at some point in time. Whether that's for the WWE title or maybe the U.S. title up against Sheamus, which I think would be a brilliant idea. We'll dive into that in a second. But um, Hell in Cell last night, yeah. I mean, as mentioned earlier, they just had to move Reigns Mysterio to SmackDown for some reason. Um, and then... They actually added another match, which was only to the kickoff pre-show, which is featuring the women's tag team champs of Natalia and Tamina against Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. However, this was just a basic singles match. It was Natalia and Mandy Rose, and Natalia ended up picking up the win. So technically, there were four women's matches on Hell in a Cell last night compared to the men's three. And then Raw last week actually as well felt women-heavy in the match segment category as well I thought but um, you know we'll see how long that lasts especially once fans get back Um, I mean I would think they'll go back to their maybe two three nothing against the women by any means matches and segments throughout each show especially Raw with the three hours compared to Smackdown's two I mean, I get each show is going to be different week in and week out. Because if it was all the same, what's the point of watching it? I mean, what's the point of watching 
half the shit they put out now as it is anyway, with as bad as it's been. But here we are. We're still watching it. We're still talking about it. Like I said earlier, there's still always going to be something to bitch about. So, um, you know, take over last week, Hell in a Cell. Yeah. Both. Damn good shows. I mean, nothing spectacular by any means. But still pretty good shows. So, hopefully the money in the bank. And hopefully everything gets back to the way it was. And whether they're saving all the good stuff for fans as they're saying they are or not, we'll see. Only time's going to tell. Because if not, once in fact, you know, fans, us fans do get back and we're going to these shows and as mentioned, keep an eye out for those videos and all that. But we're still getting the same old, same old. Like, come on. At that point, as they're already going to be in for a rude awakening, they're going to be, I don't even know if you can go any further than a rude awakening in that respect. So, it'll be worse than, honestly, how bad it has been and potentially could be if things don't change. So, yeah. Kickoff pre-show match was a women's Natalia Mandy Rose, half of the women's tag team champs and half of the basically women's number one tag team contenders right now as you know they're sort of playing this out on Raw but we'll see where they go with it and then to kick off the show they had the add-in from Smackdown Smackdown Women's Championship match inside Hell in a Cell because they put Reigns Mysterio on SmackDown, so they put Bianca and Bailey inside the cell to have two women's championship matches with one inside the cell at the Hell in a Cell pay per view last night. Just to give the women another match. Just to give, well, technically this was already on the show, but just to give the women one of those two championship matches inside Hell in a Cell, long story short. Which, this match absolutely stole the show, don't get me wrong. Um, they honestly all did. I mean, I thought the Cesaro Rollins and Kevin Owens Sami Zayn matches were the two best matches of the night, followed by Lashley McIntyre, which was, of course, the main event for the WWE Championship inside Hell in a Cell, and then the three women's matches. Two women's championship matches with Rhea and Charlotte, along with Bianca and Bailey, and then Alexa Bliss with her superpowers now. Uh, up against Shannon Baszler as she picked up the win uh, in that match as well. But yeah, at the start of the show, it was Bianca Belair and Bailey. Uh, Bianca ended up picking up the win. I mean, both these Hell in a Cell matches, as there were two, one men's, one women's, I get you got to split it down the middle, keep it even, even as you possibly can. But, you know, some things never change, even though some things need change, I get it, it is what it is, but um, it seems to me Bailey's been in every single, and don't get me wrong, ding dong, hello, like, yeah, other than Becky, and other than probably what Alexa's been doing, um, those are your top three women on the main roster, in my opinion, in my eyes they are, um, it seems to me, though, bailey has been in every single women's championship Hell in a Cell match as late. I know she was in... And maybe I'm just thinking that because Hell in a Cell came early this year compared to, you know, the, the normal uh, October schedule it's been as of late. But we'll see what they do now next year if they're going to keep it in June or, you know, move it back to October and um, have Money in the Bank or Extreme Rolls be over the summer after Wrestlemania and hope to God we don't get a SummerSlam payback which I don't think we will because we're going to have the draft then about a little over a week after SummerSlam so then they'll hop on into what should be Clash of Champions at the end of September but who knows what the fall schedule is going to look like because with these tour dates that they have for the 25 cities from July the 16th until Labor Day 
there's nothing announced uh, after that. So they'll go from Houston to Miami, up and down cross country. And, I mean, they're hitting everywhere. They literally are. Uh, so, like, if you're dying to go to a WWE event for the first time, or a just pro wrestling event in general, whether that be AEW, WWE, Ring of Honor is getting back out there, New Japan, going to come back to the States, I saw as well. Um, you know, you're going to have your chance. Uh, but who knows what the schedule is going to look like in the fall. Um, so, and... I'm not just saying that with, you know, the cities that they're going to hit, but what pay-per-views, how the pay-per-view schedule is going to look, you know, just because they change it up over the summer doesn't mean they're not going to change it up in the fall. They could keep the same, they could change it, we'll see, only time's going to tell, but, um, yeah, maybe that's why I was thinking that, I don't know, um, but yeah, Bianca picked up the win, um, at some point in time, Becky's either going to return and confront Bianca or Sasha's is going to return and confront Bianca as Banks has not been seen since WrestleMania. Uh, and Bianca was the one who beat her at the show of shows. So they could, you know, continue that potentially as well moving forward. We'll see. But then after Bianca's win backstage in Gorilla, she was interviewed uh, before we really went backstage and uh, we're partying with the almighty WWE champion. Bobby Lashley and Lashley's ladies all aboard the hoe train, if you will, uh, as they had a pre-match party, it seemed like, backstage, and Lashley was getting ready for his WWE uh, Championship title defense against Drew McIntyre, in which, of course, as mentioned, that was, in fact, the main event of the evening. We're going to get to that in a second. However, after Lashley, we also went backstage some more, and actually went outside. We went to a playground. Went to Alexa Bliss's playground. Uh, she got a promo about not knowing who or what will up. Whether she meant later on the night, at that point in time, you didn't know. Or, you know, tomorrow night, now tonight, on Raw, or in the weeks and months to come. Um, sort of figured, okay, it'd be at Hell in a Cell. It sort of ended up being at Hell in a Cell. We're going to get to that in a second as well. But yeah, as she swung on that swing... Alexa Bliss's playground. She cut that promo about, you know, not knowing who or what will show up. So you think, you know, potentially the fiend Bray Wyatt, because he hasn't been seen in quite some time either. But um, after that, we went to the ring, as technically Alexa's playground is in a ring backstage. But yeah, we had the opening contest, and then they did three separate um, segments with an interview. I'm sure, if I can recall, there probably was a commercial or two in there as well for the WWE Network on Peacock. Be sure to subscribe right here on YouTube, though, if I've done so already. And then backstage with Lashley and his ladies, and then Alexa Bliss at her playground. So, But yeah, back to the ring in the Thunderdome. As they're still in Florida, there's been three Thunderdomes. One in Orlando, one in St. Pete, and then now in Tampa. So, they're all within an hour of each other anyway. Orlando's in the center of the state. St. Pete's just south of Tampa in the western part of the state as two arenas in a baseball stadium. As they went arena, baseball stadium, back arena, and then they'll be hitting arenas, baseball stadiums, and football stadiums once they get back out on the road. And Hopefully, uh, I'll see some of you at these upcoming events. But it was Cesaro Seth Rollins in singles competition as uh, this was a WrestleMania rematch. Uh, they've sort of continued it since then as well uh, with Rollins just floating around a little bit. But um, still, I mean, he got his ass kicked uh, at Bailey's house. Ding dong, hello, through the door. If you didn't see it, go look it up. Don't want to get uh, too specific. But, um, yeah, they're continuing this. And I think it's taken this long because Cesaro challenged Reigns at WrestleMania Backlash for the Universal title. So, um, I mean, this honestly, along with Owens and Zayn, both of those matches very well could have been inside Hell in a Cell, but they weren't. 
it is what it is. I mean, sometimes these regular singles feuds are ten times better than, you know, the championship feuds that are going on. But that's just wrestling. You know, that's just how it is. But, uh, work. He did mostly everything in this match. But Rollins ended up stealing a victory. Picked up the win with a quick roll-up. So Seth Rollins came out on top. So they're split. 1-1. Do they have the grudge match at Money in the Bank? Probably, but maybe not. We'll see. I would hope so. I'd be down for it. I would think one, if not both of these wrestlers, superstars, of course, as WWE calls them, uh, will, in fact, be in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Uh, we'll see about that as well. Um, I don't know what direction they're going to go with in one who's going to be in the match versus two who's going to end up winning for both the men and the women, along with, you know, if it's going to be six, seven, eight competitors in the matches this year as well. We'll see. I'm sure we'll have, you know, those damn qualifying matches that we get on Raw and SmackDown leading into the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, in which, you know, I have a few uh, thoughts on, you know, honestly, who could win and who would make sense, but they've dropped the ball with the Money in the Bank I don't know how many times the past few years. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, they, they sort of did get it right. They fixed their mistake with Otis winning. I get COVID just started. You know, they have to have the cinematic type match up at HQ. Otis wins it. Um, and then he drops it to Miz. Miz held it until he cashed in on McIntyre at Elimination Chamber. But then a week after that, Lashley won the title. And he's held it ever since. And now Miz is injured, but he's still on TV in the wheelchair with Dripstick uh, with, uh, John Morrison. So, yeah, we'll see what happens with Cesaro and Rollins and if, you know, they're going to be in Money in the Bank. Um, and if one, if not both, you know, could win it. I mean, Rollins already won it. Cesaro's fine getting a push, but he loses now. Does this push stop? Is it going to continue somehow? I don't know. We'll see. But speaking of Money in the Bank, um, they had a Money in the Bank promo right after this match. And Money in the Bank, um, as already previously announced, will be Sunday, July the 18th. You can't spend it until you earn it. That's the headline. That's the catchphrase this year for Money in the Bank, in which is honestly one of my favorite uh, pay-per-views of the year. Um, and, I mean, Money in the Bank honestly is a championship. You win it, you have a championship contract in which you can cash in any point in time, anywhere within a calendar year. Um, it sets the course for the next year in the WWE with whoever has the Money in the Bank briefcase. Because whoever does, in fact, win it and is going to be toting that briefcase around can cash in anytime, anywhere. You don't know when it's going to be. It could be on a Raw, NXT, SmackDown, a house show for God's sake, which has never happened before. That'd be something to see. Pay-per-view as well. Hell, Rollins cashed in. Main event of WrestleMania 31. So, Money in the Bank next month, July the 18th, a little less than a month away. Uh, and then next, we had Alexa Bliss and Shayna Baszler in singles competition as Lily is still in timeout following with what happened a few weeks ago on Monday Night Raw with uh, the main event segment they had with Alexa Bliss, Shayna Baszler. And uh, Shayna, of course, calling Lily just a stupid doll, but Lily got the last laugh there, but Alexa still has her in timeout. But Alexa didn't even need Lily. She has superpowers now. As uh, Nia Jax and Reggie were ringside, and uh, Alexa got Nia to slap Reggie right across the face. And then Alexa, off the top rope with a Twisted Bliss, picked up the win over Shayna Baszler. They need to figure out what the hell they're doing with Shayna Baszler. Um, you know, they've really chopped the ball with her as well, for God's sakes. I mean, this goes on and on for uh, all the different wrestlers they've could have done this with. And this is mile, if not ten miles, trillion miles long, for God's sakes. It's ridiculous. 
and that's just not through the years that's just as of late honestly even though it is through the years at the same time but I think if you do watch WWE you understand to an extent what I'm trying to say so um, yeah Alexa she has superpowers now she can make people slap people right across the face whenever the hell she feels like it um, and then she picked up the win as mentioned again Shayna We'll see if Alexa is going to get a push now, following her win last night as well. But after that, it was uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, as mentioned with Cesaro Rollins. Owens Zayn very well could have been inside Hell in a Cell, probably should have been number one match of the night, followed by Cesaro and Rollins, and then the WWE title, and then the three women's matches, four women's matches if you count the kickoff pre-show. But um, Sami Zayn surprisingly picked up the win. Um, wasn't expecting him. He did get busted open a little bit. Uh, he was bleeding from the mouth. Wasn't expecting him to win. Was not. Um, as much as I like both Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, was expecting Owens to win to propel him to something, you know, a little further on down the line. But he suffers a loss. Um, he's sort of been banged up as of late, storyline wise. He's been selling it very well. He's, uh, both these guys have been in the Intercontinental Championship pitcher. Big E to Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews, uh, with Sammy and his conspiracy against me. Um, and then, you know, Kevin Owens with sneezes chopped to the throat. Um, and yes, I said sneeze, not Aziz, because sneeze is Apollo Crews' bodyguard. Um whatever the hell, the nail chop, is that what they call it? I think so. Apollo, what he's doing, as best as he's ever been, probably as good as it's going to get to, honestly, because this ain't going to work once fans come back. So they're getting out of the way now. I mean, it'll last for a little while, but eventually they'll take the title off and put it on somebody else. Maybe back on Sammy a year after he returned, six months after he uh, lost it at the Elimination Chamber, Technically, the last uh, pay-per-view with fans a month before Mania 36, he lost it to Strowman, and then Strowman's not even with the company anymore, for God's sakes. Um, because you go back to Clash of Champions, what, it was a triple threat with Sammy, Styles, and Jeff Hardy, and Sammy and Owens, they revisit this. Maybe Sammy's the one to defeat Apollo Crews at some point in time, but yeah, Owens... Um, with the throat, yeah, that nail chop, I think that's what they call it. Um, yeah, he's been, they've all been with Paul Cruz as of late, um, and his fake-ass Nigerian accent. And then, uh, last night, Owens in his shoulder. My God, Kevin Owens is one of the best. Um, he actually tweeted just a little bit ago as well that, um, he very well could be taking some time off, but we'll see how much of a ploy that is. Uh, I mean, of course, I'd like to see him in Money in the Bank and win it, for God's sakes. And He's just been another one that's just... He's been there. Hell, he faced Reigns in how many straight pay-per-views for the title late last year, early this year. But he's still just floating around. It seems to me they, they know what to do with him, but they sort of don't. But at the same time, as I've stated before, he doesn't need a championship to be good. He's already damn good as it is, but... If he has a title on him, it makes him ten times, you know, more intriguing, ten times better than what he already is. Um, so Sami Zayn with the win. Kevin Owens could be taking some time off, so he says via his Twitter. We'll see. But um, yeah, that was match the night, I thought, as they've always stole the show. After that, a recap from Roman Reigns and Rey Mysterio. I thought for a second they were going to show the uh, match in full from SmackDown. As this was supposed to be on the card, but they moved it to SmackDown, as mentioned. Um, so, a recap from that, and then we had the co-main event of the evening. Well, of course, Reigns picked up the win and retained his championship, he did not know. But, co-main event was next, is Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair for the Raw Women's Championship. And then, Rhea, yeah, she took one out of Charlotte's playbook and won via disqualification. So, Rhea Ripley retains, and she's still your Raw Women's Champion. Uh, we'll see what they do with this moving forward. Becky, you know, could get involved one way or another. Maybe Sasha in this as well. 
Um, if if Becky's not in this, Becky's on SmackDown. If Sasha's um, not in this, Sasha's on SmackDown. So flip flop it, vice versa, however you want to put it. I would think Becky's going to work better on Raw. Sasha's going to work better on SmackDown. But they could, you know, do the total opposite, and especially with getting back out on the road, keeping couples together. Rollins is on SmackDown. Um, you know, Becky was on Raw, relinquished the title to Asuka. Asuka's another one they're not doing a whole lot with right now. You know, she's, you know, still in this Raw Women's Championship pitcher, if you will, along with Nikki Cross, which, you know, they really haven't done a whole lot with her. Uh, and then Alexa Bliss picks up the win and gets Shayna. And then Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax are sort of still together as a tag team for some reason. I don't know why, but... Um, yeah, we'll see what happens, but they like to keep couples together out on the road. But at the same time, there's going to be another draft right after SummerSlam. So, you know, if Becky's going to be on Raw, maybe Rollins comes over from SmackDown back to Raw and then gives Monday Night Rollins another boost. We'll see. But Rhea Ripley's still your Raw Women's Champion. Then the main event of the evening, as it was, Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre. Uh, Lashley ended up winning... And and both these, I think I stated a second ago, both these Hell in a Cell matches, Barn Burner, all these matches stole the show, I thought. I mean, there were, as I've listed them, how good they were, I thought, uh, a few times now already. Seriously, though, every single match on the Hell in a Cell card and go back takeover delivered and very well could have been the best match of the night, depending on who you ask. But in both these Hell in a Cell matches... They used anything and everything they possibly could have, weapon-wise. You know, steel chair, kendo stick, table. Uh, I don't think there are any handcuffs or bolt cutters or thumbtacks or even ladders, you know, by any means uh, in that regard this time around. Um, I know there's a toolbox in the Reigns one on Friday, and there might have been... Um, one of those last night as well. I guess there was a hand sticking out from underneath the ring as well because I guess they had a crash pad for McIntyre when he got slammed through the table or ringside inside Hell in a Cell though. Of course, as Hell in a Cell is just a little bit bigger than a steel cage. Uh, but Lashley is still your WWE champion. So with Bobby Lashley picking up the win, Drew McIntyre now can never challenge for the WWE championship ever again as long as Bobby Lashley is WWE Champion. We'll see how long that lasts, as mentioned earlier, but uh, Hell in a Cell, damn good show. But uh, looking ahead, upcoming matches potentially, you know, there's been some rumors floating around, of course, Brock Lesnar potentially coming back. Did not return once again last night. They could go Lashley-Lesnar for SummerSlam. They could go uh, Bobby Lashley-Kofi Kingston uh, for SummerSlam as well, if not sooner. Um, Lashley-Keith Lee, don't know what's up with that. Keith Lee's been missing. Uh, as well as of late, but I mean, just think, Keith Lee, Bray Wyatt, um, who else has been missing from Raw as of late? If you know, let me know in the comments below. But honestly, if they're on Raw, Raw's probably not as bad as it's been the past two months. But, flip over SmackDown for a quick second, and then we're gonna go back and forth with the uh, championships, with the main titles and the mid-card titles. Um, yeah, Lashley, Lesnar, Lashley, Kofi, Lashley, Keith Lee. Roman Reigns, John Cena seems to be penciled in for SummerSlam. How about Roman Reigns, Big E? I think Big E very well could be a potential option to win the men's money in the bank this year. We'll see. Um, because, especially with Alistair gone now, because they're starting a feud with Alistair and Big E, Big E doesn't have anything to do now. And they could have uh, took Big E put him up against Reigns after he lost at Mania to Apollo in that Intercontinental Championship title defense. So Big E held the title what, from Christmas to April and now he hasn't done anything since the past two months. It's just how it goes sometimes. But yeah, Big E uh, could be an option for Reigns, but Reigns has been busy with, you know, the bloodline, the family with the Usos. Uh, Cesaro, now Rey Mysterio, what's next for Roman Reigns, we'll see. 
Um, the tag team title defenses, AJ Styles and Almost has to be RK Bro, Orton and Riddle on Monday Night Raw, and then uh, Rey Mysterio and the Usos on SmackDown. Especially if they're going to have the family with the head of the table, uh, Roman Reigns still your Universal Champion, and the Usos in Tag Team Gold make them look as powerful as ever. Makes sense. Have the Usos defeat the Mysterios at some point in time. We'll see. Um, and then the two mid-card titles with Sheamus and Apollo as your U.S. and IC champs. Sheamus with McIntyre now no longer able to defend or challenge um, any title defense of Bobby Lashley's for the WWE Championship as long as Lashley's champion. What is McIntyre going to do? Maybe they have more money in the bank. I wouldn't mind that. I mean, they work their way around that, and then McIntyre still gets Lashley, which is going to piss a lot of people off. But Bobby Lashley, I don't think he's going to be holding this WWE title too much longer. I mean, he's held it since March. So probably until SummerSlam. I mean, I've said, I don't know if I've said it on here. I know I've said it, though, um, that for for Lashley, and especially now, okay, McIntyre can't challenge Bobby, but... Um, if if they were smart, if they booked it right, this is what I'd do. You have Lashley drop it to Brock Lesnar, and then you have Keith Lee confront Lesnar, and then Lesnar puts over Keith Lee, whether Keith Lee wins the title or not. One, he's back on TV, and Brock Lesnar just put him over. So, I mean, Lesnar, you think about it in the past, he's put over so much talent, whether, you know, it's good for the short term or long term. Brock Lesnar has done his part. Whether you think he can wrestle or not, he can, for God's sakes, okay? He's better than Bill Goldberg. Um, he, he's he's better than... He's a draw. He sells. And that's why Brock Lesnar is going to be coming back at some point in time. It's just not a uh, matter on if he's coming back. It's a matter on when he's coming back. Same thing with John Cena. So, uh, especially with them getting back in on the road, they're going to have to sell tickets, they're going to have to sell shows, they're going to have to continue to sell merchandise, that's overpriced, but it is what it is. Um, so McIntyre fits well with Sheamus, I think. I mean, they revisit uh, a real feud, sort of what Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn have gone through the past few years, and I mean, hell, Sheamus could have challenged McIntyre for the WWE title the past few months, but then he, he loses to Miz, and then uh, Lashley beats Miz, and you know McIntyre hasn't held it now since February. But um, yeah, McIntyre I think fits well up against Sheamus. We'll see what happens there. Damian Priest hasn't been on Raw the past few weeks for some unknown reason. I don't know why. Um, Jeff Hardy don't hinder the Jinder Mahal. Uh, John Morrison as well, along with Keith Lee, another option for him potentially. Uh, if they don't want to put him in the main event scene right off the bat, once he doesn't factor turn, but then the other mid card title with uh, Apollo Cruz is your Continental Champion. You know, maybe Big E, maybe Cesaro, maybe Kevin Owens, uh, King. Well, no longer King Baron Corbin, as Nakamura's got the crown now. We'll see if King of the Ring returns as well uh, momentarily here shortly over the next few months, by the end of the year or not. I don't know. Um, and then Sami Zayn could, as mentioned, be the one to take the title off of Apollo if, you know, they want to go that route, which I wouldn't mind whatsoever. But um, that's a, you know, short look ahead, I guess. But, yeah, King of the Ring, we'll see if that returns. However, I do know Great American Bash is going to be July the 6th. AEW Road Rager will be July the 7th. AEW Fighter Fest will be a two-night, two-week event once again this year. Wednesday night, July the 14th and the 21st. Friday night SmackDown, first SmackDown, first WWE show full-time, not WrestleMania two-night event with 25,000 plus each night just a few months ago. Full-time, back on the road, WWE, July the 16th for SmackDown. Then Money in the Bank that Sunday the 18th. Raw the following night on the 19th. And then they're hitting the road running. They are. Hitting the ground running on the road, if you will. Uh, but 
it's going to be a fun next few weeks that urge to see what's going to look like and then once it does in fact get back okay this is what we need this is what we've been wanting you know this is good this is bad this is such good shit as Vince has probably been thinking the past year and a half anyway but um yeah excited and uh as mentioned I'll have uh live reaction streams of those events that I just ran through with Great American Bash um AEW for the whole month of July, the 7th, the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th for Road Rager, two-night, two-week event for Fighter Fest and Fight for the Fallen as well. Uh, and then after Money in the Bank, we're on to SummerSlam and we're on to All Out. So, as mentioned earlier, we'll get there when we get there. But keep an eye out for more live reaction streams right here on the channel along with videos from upcoming events that I'll be attending live in living color. Man, it's going to feel good to get back to a wrestling event. Don't get me wrong. But um, hopefully enjoyed. As mentioned, be sure to the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Keep an eye out for those videos over the next few weeks and months, as always. And um, we're close. We are so very close for in the world of pro wrestling getting back to normal.